In this episode of the Success Grid podcast, I am speaking with Deshaun Jackson to talk about how problems are the gifts that you need and the ones that are preparing you for success. Deshaun Jackson loves working with people. Pillars that Deshaun lives by are daily habits, daily disciplines, working out, listening to the call of your inner voice, habitual construction, accountability to better ourselves. So Deshaun, I'm glad you are joining me for this episode of the Success Grid podcast. Hussein, thank you very much for having me on and your listeners. Thank you very much for tuning in. Awesome. So first of all, because this is the Success Secret Podcast, and before we dive into talking about how we are prepared in our life experiences and what happened with us, with things, with other people, uh, what is success to you and how do you see other people have certain misconceptions of what success is? First, to me, success starts with your inner voice. What is your conscience telling you you need to do for you? Not for other people, not to make them happy. That starts here. You will not find true success trying to please anyone else before you start with yourself. So at the very least, I can we can then divulge into education, career, uh, family after that. But you have to start with yourself first. Mm, definitely that's that's we have to take responsibility like we cannot keep blaming other people for certain things yes there are things that are our out of our control right but that's we true. have to take control of things that we can control not blame it on others or the circumstances on things that we can definitely not control that's very important so now uh why do you think people are the most thing that they are afraid of like why do you think people that think of things or that have some kind of limiting beliefs in themselves and cannot do certain things, in your opinion? So I could go into everybody's got their own specific excuse for what they give. But when you boil it down, people are just afraid to step out of their comfort zone because it's going to require you to go broke. It's going to require you to maybe lose that relationship. It's going to require you to be in disagreement with your children. It might not align with the people within your inner circle because they didn't receive the vision and the goal. So that's why I feel like people struggle. They're not used to that opposition that's going to come. It's going to happen. Mm, definitely. Because like generally we are used to this, let's say, comfort zone because we think if we are getting out of it, we something bad is going to happen. So we would like to have some kind of what is secured to us in our mind but sometimes a lot of people talk about this kind of what we believe it could be security it's actually not because it could be something better out of this box right do you agree with that let me give the analogy for what you said you're saying perfectly you go out into the ocean as you start to walk out you feel it get deeper and then you feel the water start to go off to the ledge and that's where most people stop because they get uncomfortable but what needs to happen is you need to have a helicopter take you out deep and you have to swim back because once that happens you're not scared of that edge anymore you've already been past it most people are scared to go past the edge mm, definitely definitely so now in your experience in your own experience and if you have seen some other people happen to them like what for us as humans need to do to let's say step off the sledge and go to the next step at least like Eventually, we are not going to step 10 steps at the, at one time, right? We are going to take it as uh, I think the old show says, step by step or something like that. Sure. <laughs> yeah, you, you were already on the same page. Life doesn't show you the whole path. It only reveals itself as you dedicate yourself to the path one step at a time. And you don't get much past that. So that's how you have to start believing that it's going to happen. But all I'm going to see is one step. Then I have to take the next step because most of us, we want to see the whole path laid out before we'll be we'll we'll commit to it. And that's not how it works. Mm, no, I love what you just said. Like we are not going to know all the steps. We are only going to know possibly only one step ahead. Right. And mm -hmm. the only way to know the second and third and the th fourth and fifth steps and the next ones is take the one previous. Take the next, the, the, ah, yes, the next step because we are not able to see to see ten steps ahead. For example, so we need to go at least one step further or climb another one step at a time, so we would know what is the next step. Is this is how growth in our personal growth happens because we don't know what's going to hit us. What we don't know what's going to happen with our 
from ourselves, family, friends, people around us, community around us, the jobs that we have, the business that we have, certain things that, uh, with, as we talked, like if these things that are things that we cannot we can control, great. Or but if we cannot control these things out of our control, we do not need to focus on them, right? Do you think? Absolutely. Saying like. A lot of people think of things and keep their mind busy with things then they cannot change like 1% because it's completely out of their control. And this is a problem, right? And most of the time, half the things people ruminate about over and over, they don't happen. They don't happen. And, and, and the things that do happen, death is going to happen to everybody. Relationship breakups are going to happen to everybody. Divorce is going to happen. You are going to have troubles. You're going to lose a job. You're going to get one. You're going to get fired. You're going to deal with opposition. Those things are the guaranteed. So the other things you just make up in your head and you make excuses for. Mm, definitely. So now, why do you personally think life, as we know, life is going to happen, good things, bad things, problems, issues, ups and downs, but why do you think, because I, I'm not sure if a lot of people would agree, uh, I don't know. Let's say 50-50 maybe. You would say, for example, that problems are gifts. And this is how it is yes. us being prepared for our own success, I would say, right? So why do you think problems are gifts? Like Because as mentioned, maybe let's say maybe 50-50 of the people would say it's not a good uh, thing to, to us. Like we, They would think life is always going to be good or that wouldn't have hit road roadblocks. So let me explain why I think that the problems are absolutely the gifts. First, nobody, and let me give the analogy, a baby, when it's learning to walk, it falls over, over and over and over again. No baby after falling ever just says, you know what, I'm going to sit down and I'm going to scoop my butt along the floor for the rest of my life. No, they get back up. The problem was the gift. They had to fall to learn to get back up. So when we get into these everyday problems that we all have because nobody's been through a problem that no one else has ever experienced, all of a sudden we experience these roadblocks and we start to think that it's a problem. No, people move because of pain. They move because of pressure. They move because of compression. They move because they've been put in a situation so regrettable, they decide I never wanna go back there again. That's the gift. If not, you would have stayed in your comfort zone. Mm, definitely. Like we need to be able to have some kind of pressure in our lives because like it's it's not going to be alive and this is why it's called life like it's good all the time like it's 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 not going to be good that much if it's good all the time it's, get the yin uh, and the yang you get the good and the bad you get the positive you get the hills and the valleys you uh, do not just get an upward trajectory mm. it typically is you know yes yeah. So, for example, you yourself, what certain things that happened to you that made you like some kind of a extremely positive guy and looking forward to life and doing things and doing business and improving yourself and looking at life as a whole and thinking of problems as gifts, as something that we can learn from and develop as a human yourself? The first thing that taught me was loss. I went through personal loss. I went through two divorces. I'm now currently going through my third. These losses put me on the floor where I felt like I was mentally crying and dying. And the second was I had a daily process. I had to get up every day. I couldn't take a day off because my depression didn't take a day off. My anxiety didn't take a day off. So I had to uh, get up, work, pray, positive affirmations. Um, when I felt negative, I had to make sure I was loving other people, give love when I don't feel love. It was a habitual construction of the man I want to be. So when I woke up the next day, I was proud of what I had just done previous. These habitual constructions, the daily process, and experiencing that tough loss pushed me into that mindset. Mm. So do you think that generally... Uh, tougher people that have a strong mindset and have self-leadership, let's say, and that they, they can discipline themselves to achieve what they want to achieve, even by themselves. They definitely have certain issues and difficulties in their lives. And sometimes we should, I don't want to say look for trouble, trouble or problems, no, no, no. Uh, no. Like, but we, can, we need to face them, like face them yes. head on, right? Yes. Uh, now, the way I look at it, you can life can happen to you or you can self-inflict adversity by that self-inflicted means you mess up you made a mistake and now karma debt is going to pay you in some way 
or life happens. You had a grandmother pass away, all inevitabilities which we face. Either way, you have to be prepared, whether you are self-inflicted your own adversity or life is happening. Mm, that's very important. Like these, these things are things that are very important. Like you mentioned, I think you mentioned that it could be life is like a mirror not a window do you do you agree with that and why I what what does that mean life is a, a mirror not a window like is it because we can get through it and it's a reflection something like that can you explain so for me right here, sorry for me when i hear that uh let me give my analogy it's perception so a, a family member in your life passes away you can a and i'm going to be rudimentary you can a either cry hurt pain dying from it or B, it's your fuel for motivation. It's how the person perceives it. Death is inevitable. It's not the cause of your pain. It's how you perceive the pain. Did you take it in hurt and shame and regret and it's going to be forever? Or did you say, this is the motivation to move me, push me, take me to the next level? It, death comes to everybody. It's your perception of the event that truly defines how you look at it. Mm, definitely. Yeah, like perspective in life, It's everything. It's everything. Yeah, the definitely. minute you have a lost perspective, a negative perspective, your, your, your look now is to find things to confirm that it's negative. It's going bad. It's not going to go work. It's not going to work. Versus if you come into that same situation and say, I'm going to get out. I'm going to find a way. Nothing's going to hold me back. That's what your brain will look for. Definitely. Like when we are like uh, always looking for the bad things, we will always see the bad things. Oh, Yes. This this example of a car, like if, if you are driving a certain type of car, of like a red car, for example, like I do, you always kind of maybe if you had it in your head, like you will see a lot of red cars, uh, red cars. Sorry. So this Which is you didn't lot. notice previous to. Yes, absolutely. You saying yes. Absolutely. Like and when we focus and on, on put our energy and perspective into things that are positive and good in life, we can see that in ourselves and it will reflect to people and business and life in general. So this is very important. Like we can, we need to switch. We need to go 180 degrees from in this. And let me add another t uh, little piece to that. What happens is people get into the negative mindset and then they start to judge their life. They start to go, man, I feel like crap. Well, my life is crap. Well, no, you, you came to that conclusion. Never judge your life when you feel like you're in a low level situation. You wait, you go do a workout, put yourself into a positive mood, then come back to the situation and judge. How. But if you judge your life and when you feel like crap, you are going to absolutely go two plus two equals four. And I feel like. <laughs> yeah. so throughout that uh like you what you are doing now what is the let's say the worst and best advices that you have received personally um the worst advice i have ever received is it's okay to sit in those low level moments mm -hmm. and i think i was how i was told was by a therapist deshaun When you feel depressed, it's okay to just sit in it for a moment. And I've never felt good sitting in and feeling like crap. So I was like, no, absolutely not. The minute I feel like crap, I'm going to do something to take myself out of it. And I, I absolutely disagree. If you have ever been told by somebody that, hey, you need to experience that low level moment, I disagree completely. Get yourself out of it. Mm, definitely. Uh, I, I totally agree. And the best Yeah, uh, the best, I want you to hear your best, but also like this kind of things like, yeah, you need to soak it in the bad thing. No, wh why would I would want to drag myself down, right? Yes, it, I would never tell you to drink more poison. <laughs> no, absolutely not. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, and, uh, and in regards to the best advice that you have received, The best advice I've ever received was a quote from my coach and mentor, Wes Watson. And what he said to me was, you will never rise to your goals, but you will always fall to the strength of your systems. And what that means is we set goals high and sometimes we don't reach them. But the way you do is by daily systems. What are you doing every day to reach the man in the future that you want to be? Because I guarantee that man in the future is looking back at you, wondering, did you wake up today to help make it happen or else he's not there? Mm. So when you talk about systems, you're talking about daily habits, daily discipline. And this is one of the things a lot of people fall for. Like we like sometimes when we say habits, you, we might have certain bad habits, right? But we say to ourselves, we can't quit. 
But the issue is maybe we can quit, but maybe we need to replace them with a different habit, right? Do you think that maybe could be a simpler solution to what it what looks like? I believe these solutions, Hussein, are strictly simple. I don't believe life is very, for us, is very complicated. We make it complicated. The solutions are simple. So yes, if you have negative habits, it's a learned behavior. If you don't care to smoke, guess what you did every day? You pulled a cigarette out, you lit it, you walked out, you told somebody you did, you did a pattern. You did it daily. You did it for 10 years. You have to replace that pattern. You have to replace the movements. It's a new thought, new action, new behavior, and it has to repeat over time. The same way you've been drinking for 10 years is the same bad habit you need to replace. In the, and people think, well, I can replace my bad habits that I've been doing for 20 years. I'll do it for a month. No, it doesn't work like that. Your subconscious knows you. It knows whether you're committed or not. It knew you were committed in drinking for 10 years. It knows whether you're committed to not drink for 10 years. Mm, definitely. So what would be, you, would be your final takeaway for people, let's say, to have this kind of perspective on life that we need to look at problems as gifts and learn from them, of the problems that we have, and look at it at uh, 180 degrees and start being diff uh, looking at things from a different perspective in a good way and try to control what we can control and we cannot control and what we fear is going to happen is not going to happen because it, from originally it's not it's not going to happen and it's out of our control so for me the first thing i'm, I'm telling someone is uh I, i will start with self-love if you don't love yourself you are less likely to follow through on anything else So you have to love yourself, whether you believe it or not. I don't care about your belief that you love yourself. You have to do and show yourself you love yourself. And that means you follow through on your daily disciplines, love for yourself, exercise, nutrition. What you put in your mouth is absolutely essential. Um, and the self-limiting beliefs. You have to look at it like I'm not a victim. I'm an active participant in my life. The minute you victimize, you take the power away from yourself and you let life dictate what happens to you. Mm -hmm. You have to say, I am not a victim. I'm an active participant in my life. And you always have been. You've been making choices. It's just that when life happened, you decided to say, oh, woe is me. No, no, no. You were an active participant just before. Don't You have to be an active participant when you feel like life is affecting you in a negative way. Mm -hmm. No, definitely. Like, uh, uh, I I am stunned when I see someone who's like, for example, 100 years old and still wants to work and do something for themselves, their family and the community around them. Like, <laughs> that's that that's that mind up there that didn't that didn't go any that that's an active brain. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Definitely, definitely. Well, Deshaun, where can people learn more about you, what you do and contact you? Uh, my name's on the screen, Deshaun Jackson. You can find me on Facebook under that name, or you can find me on Instagram now under the Psych RN Fit, P S Y C H R N F I T. I was a psych nurse. I'm still a psych nurse, and I work in mental health. That is what's funding the shift into lifestyle coasting. So the Psych RN Fit, message me, DM me for coaching. You're saying you've been amazing. Your audience is amazing. I love this. Thank you so much. Thank you for joining me for this podcast and really love to have your energy here. It's amazing and you provided a great perspective, your thoughts, the knowledge that you shared. It's uh, love that it's uh, great and personal at the same time. So uh, thank you for joining. Thank you.